My name is Jeremy Walton, and this is the cinematography of Raised by Wolves. Let's go. Season two of Raised by Wolves was recently released, so I thought, why not make a video about the look they created for the show? More specifically, the day for night shots. This show is pretty wild, so besides the look, you should check it out for the storyline. If the show sounds familiar, it's probably because Ridley Scott is an executive producer and directed the first two episodes. He also developed the overall look of Raised by Wolves. For this video, I will cover a bit of the cinematography, but with limited information, there wasn't a lot to go on, and that's why I thought I'd cover the day for night shots. That's something I've covered before and you might be interested in. Now this is a television series, so there's a handful of directors and cinematographers, so I'll be bouncing around between them. For the camera and lens package, the cinematographer Ross Emery says, We shot on Panavision Ultra Speeds and Super Speeds, which are 1970s Panavision lenses, and the combination of some of the newer Panavision zooms as well. I shoot on nothing but Alexas at this point because I think the quality is perfect, the skin tones are fantastic, the functionality and reliability is superb. Definitely something you'd expect for a Ridley Scott production and HBO Max, but Emery also mentions, with the fun exception of one scene where Mother thinks she has internal damage and removes an eyeball to look inside her abdomen. For this scene, we used a GoPro with a tub of transparent gel and Android internals to depict what the character sees. You know I love talking about matching different cameras, but not going there for this video. Now for creating the look, Ridley Scott does have some experience in sci-fi. Do I need to cover that? You're good? Okay, we'll move on. He drew countless sketches to visualize what he wanted for the series. These were very detailed storyboards that he's known to do. They're actually works of art by themselves. He refers to them as filming the series on paper. Ridley Scott also wanted to go into a different direction with tech. He was tired of the typical spaceship and referred to it as boring. So he modeled one after his electric razor with no windows or lights and jokingly said they made an eight ton razor for the show. Ridley's longtime cinematographer, Darius Walski, who worked together on films like The Martian, collaborated on Raised by Wolves as well. When talking about the look, he says, the whole thing was to juxtapose the future. Once they settled on the planet, it's kind of very basic. It's almost like early settlers, historically very primitive and stuff. Emery echoes the same conclusions on the look of the series. We obviously took a lead from Ridley's pilot and the first episodes we used it as a template for a look. That look was interesting as it felt kind of anti-sci-fi, almost like a documentary feel. Ethnographic was a word we used for the style, capturing a way of life from an independent perspective. Expanding on the look, we also have the colorist Stefan Nakamura, who's worked alongside Scott and Walski as well. It was the opposite of what we did on The Martian. In that case, we went through and isolated the ground and the mountains and significant portions of the environment and made them a terracotta color. Here, we took the same kind of approach, but to pull the color out of things and leave a lot of the shots almost monochrome. Emery adds to this. Color-wise, it's a strange, harsh planet, so desaturation and a harder contrast seemed right, with splashes of color that usually represent the technology they brought with them from Earth. I really liked the world they created and this future that wasn't all about technology. This mix of new and old for me really sold me on the story and fit with what they called a documentary feel. Okay, that was a quick overview, but let's get into the day for night shots. Like I mentioned, I did do a video about this, day for night using filters, that if you're interested at all in trying to achieve that look, then go watch that because I really break down the process. Another DP for the series is Eric Messerschmitt, which you might know from the series Mindhunter, which I've talked about in another video. There was a lot to consider when determining what to do when they started shooting day for night. You first have to start with story. Ridley had this idea that there's multiple moons on this planet, and so nighttime is a little bit brighter than it is on Earth. You know, in fact, there's still a little bit of light in the sky. The moons are up there, and they're always kind of reflecting, so everything is a little bit lifted. I think that makes sense, and maybe something you might not think of at first. I also think consistency is important. If you decide the world has a specific look, then sticking to it sells it. The movie Mad Max Fury Road had a similar approach, and it worked. A day for night look can be difficult because, well, you know, the sun. There's a lot of things you're going to fight along the way. We went for this very blue kind of icy steel blue look and you know, it can be challenging. I mean, we built some LUTs, we built a kind of day for night look and then we found actually that it looks drastically different overcast versus sunlit. Now, I couldn't find any information about the use of filters. It's possible they didn't use any. For me, I love them. Tiffin makes a few. If you want to do your own tests, have a look at the Tiffin Cool Day for Night filter. Or for a unique look, try out the Tiffin Day for Night monochrome filter that you might like even better. 
As much as I love using filters, there are cases when they don't get used for many reasons. Check out a video I did, The Cinematography of Ozark, if you want to learn about their approach to shooting the series at 4400 Kelvin and using no filtration. The day for night look is a process. If you do your research, you'll find there are many ways to achieve the look and a bunch of variables that can affect your image. Now that might sound discouraging if you're a cinematographer or filmmaker tackling that look. Something I really love that Messerschmitt said might help you out. It was an evolving aesthetic that we were trying to develop, you know, and it wasn't like we had a formula that we just threw in place. We had to develop it. I mean, perfect. I always try to find something that sums up what I'm talking about, and that does it. Just think of the combined knowledge the filmmakers have and budget for this series. And Messerschmitt talks about something that has been done for a very long time, but they had to develop their own process for their look. That's why knowledge of what has been done, what's being done, and your own testing is important to being a filmmaker. And what they did for Raised by Wolves is a good example of that. Well, there you have it, the cinematography of Raised by Wolves. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hit that like button because there's definitely more in the way. Subscribe so you don't miss out. Leave a comment if you like this show as much as me. Until next time, it's a wrap.